I let you roll with it at the start, bro. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we don't need a formal intro, though. We just get straight in. Put you in the hot seat, bro. <laughs> Put you in the hot seat. So tell me your deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> no. Nah, some bad um, ones. Some bad ones, yeah. <laughs> Sick, bro. Sick. So you're, tw- you're 24 right now, which completely blew my fucking mind when I found that out. How's a how's a twenty four year old from fucking what Kent or something? Yeah. I just feel even uh, worse, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, twenty four year old. You know, over the last couple of years, you're living living the lifestyle. You got the mindset, but it was sick physique. You got to get all your you're building some sick businesses and stuff right now. What? What what happened in like such a short period of time for you to go? Because I've seen your videos, I've I've watched your content, and one of your clients, you know, and you went from just a fucking jump, <laughs> like not being offensive, but like we can yeah. look back and you're real enough for yourself to be like, yeah, I wasn't where I wanted to be, to fucking whoa, like huge big level up. Was there any like mad pivotal moments, transitions, clicks in the brain that was just like, fuck yeah, I'm going all in. Yeah, there were, to be fair, there was a few. First one, I was I was actually a golfer, a pretty good level. I was living out in Spain for six months or so when I got into the junior European tour. And I was playing on this course, and I think it was like 250,000 euro joining fee or something like that. And I was like, Ferraris everywhere, watchers, wealthy people. And I was like, what am I doing? But I also knew at that point that I was like, I don't want to be a pro golfer. I wanted to be, I knew I wanted to be something businessy and have full control. I didn't want to be like a high paid athlete that has to move and do whatever he's told. I was like, I want to have a business. So I went back to the UK, started working as an engineer. I was still a complete loser at this point, like a complete loser. But I did know from seeing that, like just the exposure to the lifestyle, I was like, I need that. And I don't know how it's going to happen, but I need that. I need to live in the sun. I don't want to live in the rain, but I need to work for myself and have total control. I didn't want to go down that golf route. And there was a few other reasons I didn't like the golf route, but didn't go that way. Went back into engineering. And then I had another moment where effectively my mom got ill. That woke me up like, fuck. I was like, shit like what the fuck's gonna happen like I have to take control here because my dad was doing well but I was like okay but I'm gonna have to do something because my parents won't be around forever got my sister so I was like driving force went all in I then ironically quit my job (laughs) and no one backed me like at all was that like the classic UK mindset like roll your sleeves up, blue collar, you do your fucking nine to five, mm. get your pension and that's like deemed a success. You maybe drive like an A-class or something and you get a wee semi-detached house. Yeah, it's you like, thought you were a ball though with an A-class. Play, play it safe, brother, play it safe. And then I think your mom and dad, if they don't really know what you're on, like my mom and dad didn't know what online coaching was up until probably about a year ago. And I've been doing coaching for 10 years. You know? <laughs> I was a bit like fucked. Um but they obviously look at that and it's like, what are you doing? You're, you're making such a big mistake. You're you're making this like you, you're cutting ties with a career, a pension. Mm. Like uh, when when did that change for them? When did they like look at you and be like, oh, fair fox, Tom? <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, I mean, at the start, they didn't back it. There was a huge argument about it. It was COVID and they're all like, what are you doing? Like, it's the worst time ever to quit the job. I did quit my job. And I look like I understand exactly why they thought what I said was crazy because I looked like a loser. Like I was, <laughs> I was a loser. Like I'd been going to the gym for a little bit, but I was like, I want to make this happen. And intrinsically, I had this belief that I was going to do it somehow. Not because I knew how, I was just committed to making it happen. And yeah, they didn't believe in me. So I was like, okay, shut your mouth, just show them. I was a month with no work and I was just, online courses, got a mentor. I had like 1,200 pound in my bank from quitting my job. Spent 1,000 on a six month recurring (laughs) mentorship. So I was like, right, I'm gonna spend all my money and I've got to pay for next month and I don't have a job yet. 
went to the gym on the 4th of January or whatever when it opened, the second day, shuts, COVID again. And I was like, okay, fuck. So that striked me like more pain, more growth, more reason to start pushing online because this was in person. So I came back, the gym owner nicely let me take some dumbbells home. And I had like 800 followers on Instagram. And I was like messaging people, showing on my stories like PT outside. It was snowing. I was there shoveling snow on the side of the road. In my first month, I did like first two weeks, I think I did 3,900 quid. And I was like, what the fuck have I been doing? Yeah. You and were. I was telling my parents, they didn't really believe me. They didn't get it. And they're like, what are you doing? What do you mean? Started, I weren't really monetizing online, but like started, had no idea what I was doing. Selling little 999 things, making a bit of money, selling some supplements. I was in hustle mode then even. Like every, su- supplements? Was that for like yeah, an so like, or like I, I remember, Tom's secret sauce? No, <laughs> like I remember when I basically... The first day I went to the gym, I made a trade account with my PT um, certification or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, right, I went to the supplements um, retailer or uh, I don't know what you call it, but effectively went in their trade account. You can get it like 20% cheaper, 30% cheaper. Mm. And what I did were in COVID because of all the online delivery messed up stuff. Yeah. I got my first few clients, made a few K and I went and spent like, one and a half K straight back. I'd paid my mentorship off, put the other grand, drained it straight back out into supplements. And then all my clients that were coming to me, I put it back into supplements, sold them supplements, made 30% profit again on top of the sessions. It's a very harmosy thing to do. Oh, I was just doing anything I could. That's incredible. Even clothing. I went and I ordered some clothing from the US. Weren't planning to sell it. This was in about month two. I was always re- reinvesting back into myself, got my logos on, TP, uh, and all this stuff. And then one of my clients, like there were some guys doing decent who I was training. And they were like, oh, I like that top. And it was some American brand that was very slick and well, like, Gore-Tex-y looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were like, where's that from? Can you, can you get me one? And I was like, yeah, sure. And they were like, how much? And I was like, uh, 300 quid. And I knew I'd paid like 110 for these tops. And another fiver to get a logo on. Went and got the logo put on and then flipped them double my money. And I was just selling those as well. And I was like, <laughs> it was all just stacking up. Anyway, got to about May. This was in January. Got to about May. The gyms opened. By May, I'd gone and bought like a 70K car. And I literally drove it home. I didn't tell my parents I was going there. I went into the, the it, I went into the BMW garage to order. I wanted the brand new X6, but they were like, oh, it's COVID. There's going to be like a nine, 12 month wait. Uh, and there was a brand new, um, brand new, all smoked out, blacked out M440. And I was like, a wheeler dealer car. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, man. and I was like, I had everything on it. Yeah. And it was like one of the first ones to have landed in the UK, the new shape, the new design. And um, I was like, what's under there? And they were like, oh, well, uh, we just had it drop today. It was like, there was two cars in the showroom. I was like, I'll take it. I literally had no idea what the car was. I was like, I'll take it. And then I just drove home with it two days later. And my parents were like, ah. Oh. So at that point, they started to wake up. See so you buying that car. Was that almost like, was that a for you thing or did you almost just want to show people that you had done a thing? Oh, it was, I, I was driven by like a lot of fuck you energy at the start. I think that's fine though. You know? I think you need it. Yeah. I, I would say until 10k a month, I was fuck you energy. Um, also me, it was the best thing I ever did because I literally started earning money and just drained my bank every time. But yeah. I don't recommend doing that first. Like if someone was in a nine to five, like there was a lot of times I could have, I don't know, gone and got a basic C class. I wouldn't do that. Because then you put in, you, you're spending most of your salary on a car and then you're stuck. You don't have finance to invest back in yourself. I'd done the big risks on me first. Then I was like, okay, I'm going to make a lifestyle jump. Got the car. Then the car was brand new. I parked it right outside in the disabled outside the front of the gym like a dickhead. 
but everyone would come into the gym then like whose car is that and the owner would be like thinking it was the owners the owner would be like oh, that's one of the pts and people would come into the gym and be like oh can i have a session with him didn't even know who i were because they just thought oh the others are driving rusty fucking courses this guy's in this i want to book in with him and that was my biggest marketing tool it's a really really interesting thought that and like with some of your market now of the lifestyle yes sells portrays massively wealth love wealth you know it attracts it's like an energy so that's a really cool insight there i know? didn't even realize what i was doing either um but it it worked for sure people people do it it's like you can go around telling everyone how good you are or if you just live a certain lifestyle or have certain materialistic things it shows and like you can't hate the player hate the game because that's just how it is humans are drawn to things that show success so that was definitely it but i weren't that clever with money at the start like i said i got the car that was a smart move but then i would just blow loads of money on clothes i've been flannels in the shopping center just i had so much cash and i was just spraying cash everywhere um but it was only then i would say my parents started to <clears throat> get a vibe that i was doing decent hmm. it's funny you say that i was the complete opposite right i, I had i used to work in a bar barely a pot to piss and i was like a, a drug head i swear to god like i was high every single yeah. day there was once a time like the the bar manager came in and said like hi how are you and i thought she said how high are you because it was so high and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> like proper just like run away from life smoke all the time smoke all the time smoke and i've done that for years and then i was still like building up coaching and stuff like that at the side and yeah i just like accrued cash over time and even like i had a gym and stuff when i was uh between like over covid and stuff and that's where i built up my client base built up reputation stuff didn't do the 300 pound tops you know it was maybe more like a fruit of loom for mm. we what 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 time frame job. are we in here what date i must have been um probably between nine maybe 21 to 23 ish 24 mm -hmm. but the, the smoking weed thing was congruent for how that. old are you now 27 just turned yeah. 27 yesterday so you've started a rocket shoot out really over the last few years yeah i would say so i think when i stopped taking drugs things yeah. i started wising Success up a wee bit subtraction remove the vices 100 percent. and then uh yeah because I, I when i had the the gym and stuff it was like during covid i was the only pt with a space i was like yeah of course i can train you it's my gym yeah so i, I got like low i stacked so much cash during that period of time and helped so many people i, I was doing like 80 sessions a week like every day every day what would you say your like, biggest investment has been since then in, in terms of utilizing that cash to grow put it all back in me you know i bought the got amy the ring you know when i proposed to her maybe i was maybe two years ago now mm -hmm. got us like a beautiful gaff in glasgow overlooking the city hired a really swanky mindset coach all upfront payments just mm. hired this mentor do this thing do this thing invest in me i ended up blowing like 70k like so quick <laughs> and then i was sitting and i was like well i've got all this like i've reinvested all back into be i don't have any vices now i'm clear-headed and then i was like i actually feel like worthy now to like right now i can grow this thing that's the thing though like that mindset like people a lot of people think oh i've just spent six 70k but you've not you've invested 70k and now you've got from 25 to 100 potentially yeah where now you're an asset where you might earn 10k a month 20k a month 100k a month 500k a month because you've instilled that that base in you that that framework to go from so people i think people are just they have a mindset that like if they take money out of the bank account and they spend it's gone I where in fact again. That fuck, yeah. when they put it in the right things it's going to come back not everything's like spending it on a pair of trainers it's almost like crazy how it works so see anytime like you get like a bill come in or something let's say i'm paying you right mm. when i pay you something comes back in straight away it's weird yeah and it's like oh like that's free free new clients want to work get started and it's like oh why did that happen 
was it the time spent doing all the other stuff or was it like it's like a flow i almost look at it like that you know i almost feel if, as well obviously there's a lot of strategy we use with what you're doing but i also think from just like a frequency standpoint i've invested money i remember i once spent 20k on a call spent 20k and i swear down within three days i'd made my money back and that was like so fast and and like some of it was the knowledge but i mean most of it was when you spend out you actually turn up your work rate and you align your frequency with where it needs to be to go get your goals because you don't want it to be a waste and i think it's that almost like artificial pain you need to create for yourself to go and chase it i was literally just going to say that's like if you are too comfy you're too comfy you'll sit there on the couch at three o'clock in the afternoon on a wednesday and be like Mm. Oh well, I've done the baseline, the minimal viable dose today. So just chill. Because yeah. I've got this in the bank, I've got this here, I've done my wee workout. Foods there. Then you just, I try and drain my business account. You, yeah, that's one thing you've kind of been on me about. I've still got a wee bit of like mental mm. work to do on that because I'm like, no. <laughs> I keep roughly one month expense. Yeah. Everything else I get paid by Stripe every day. I'm just like bang, gone, mm. gone, gone. And then it goes into a portfolio and then I'll either let that invest. But I mean, only recently I've actually started letting that accumulate just because of more coming in. But most most of it, I just spend straight back into the business. Or I might let it accumulate until I get to a big number and then make a huge investment all at once. Mm -hmm. But the goal is never thinking, oh, that's my safety buffer. It's thinking I'm letting this pile up so I can make an even bigger investment back in my business. Yep. For because sure. I care about the cash flow. I, I'm like, how, what can I invest in right now to make me as a person and my business more cash flowable? So you've got to become as valuable as possible. Mm. You can't do that just by sitting looking out the window. You know, exactly. you, need to, you need to kind of act your way into that positive state of energy where you're like, fuck, it's time to go again. Because if you, if you can cruise, it'd be so easy to just cruise. You know, you could just pause yeah. and be like, it's like, can train i can take a three hour fucking walk around the palm and do this shit and maybe go to the beach club twice a week and pop some bottles like why though like yeah. you do that once i was invited to beach club today and I, I thought about it and i said to amy i said a couple of the guys that i know and i was like it'd be great but he's there and i was trying to like tell myself it'd be great and then amy's like look you don't drink you're fucking white and ginger and you'll get burnt <laughs> And I was like, I fucking hate sand. Fuck that. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I was only, I was like thinking, I'll go do that because they are there. And how will I be seen? And then I was like, no, I don't actually give a fuck. So Patch have just worked. And I felt, I know I felt better doing what I'd done. I crushed like mm. three workouts today and like 10 hours of work yeah. between 4 a.m. and like four o'clock. It was I great. think at the very start, when you start, like I had, I started earning more money and I needed to do something with the lifestyle. I was like car and then I moved to Dubai and stuff like that. But once you've done that and you've had that little taste, I think when people hit eight to 12K a month, they might have a month where they can spend some money and buy different Christmas presents for people and stuff like that and go to different restaurants and do the beach clubs. And I think after four weeks, you're bored and then you actually downgrade your lifestyle and go straight back to the processes. So I used to dream about, oh my God, I can't, like I was in a dark room living at my parents' house, little rusty table against the wall. And it was just felt so depressing. It was a dark room, just a laptop, nothing else. And that's how I built my business goals. at the start. <laughs> it's goals, <right>? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And then I was like dreaming about, oh, I'm going to be in a beach club every day and I'm going to be working from a laptop. Did that for like one week and I was like, what the fuck? The sun's on my screen. This is shit. I just want to be focused. And now I've literally got an apartment, which is like 13 grand a month, which I've now just turned one of the bedrooms I've literally paid that much money to turn a bedroom into a black hole, shut all the curtains and make it as miserable as my old bedroom when I was 18. Because that's how you focus. And I spend 12 hours a day in there. 
yeah. most days. And that's what people don't get. I think they think it's all about lifestyle. But if you stop, like you said, you can go to the beach club. If you just stop and you just live with the results and the outputs, you hate yourself. You have to be growing to be fulfilled. If you're not growing and you're not, it's not even about growing. It's about not doing what you know you need to do. Yeah, that's, that's so fucking correct. Like even yeah. the other night from coming home from dinner, off the back of the photo shoot or whatever, me and my brother were sitting. I was like, "Do you want to just go fucking crush arms or something, and just sweat and just fucking do create content, do a thing?" So you just sit there and you're like looking around and you're like, you've enjoyed the thing, you've had your cake, you've ate it, but go fucking work again now. It's like I think having mm-hmm. little pockets for the week or for the like once a week, me and Amy will maybe go get a bite to eat or something for and sure. chill and relax. I think that's fine, but I'm most fulfilled when I'm serving, you know putting what I put into myself into others through like knowledge. Like, yeah, you win when you help others win. Yeah. But yeah. What would you say your relationship's like with pain at the minute now? So comparing yeah. it to like five years ago, because I think a lot of people like, I know yours is probably similar to mine now. But a lot of people struggle with a dynamic on just doing the work and it feels like a chore where I'm guessing right now you actually like going to the process or what people perceive as a pain. What, what would you say has changed with your relationship with pain? I think before I used to numb myself from pain. I was just that I was in pain through my habits. And any time I would escape them, I use like, whether it be like binge eating, binge drinking drugs or, or smoking weed to escape mm-hmm. that and just flatten it. And then it would only be like the cataclysmic fucking uh, <laughs> slingshot that would come from numbing your central nervous system to then coming sober, then it hitting you. And then numbing yourself again. So I spent like five years numb. And I remember when I stopped smoking weed and I'd been with my girlfriend, Amy, for like four or five years. And I stopped smoking. I was like, is this is this what emotions feel like? And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I was like, I just feel like, like connected with you at the moment. It's like, yeah, you idiot. This is how humans feel. And I'm like, oh, okay, right, cool. So the last like, you know, couple of years has <laughs> just been chase pain, chase mm. it like seek as much uncomfortable shit as possible conversations especially like be able to sit in an uncomfortable conversation articulate yourself well mm. i used to really struggle with that I'd be in my own head do the harder workouts like i started doing like endurance running a couple of, like a year and a bit uh go r- running like half marathons every week running marathons ultra marathons done one for like the swiss and italian alps on no food and no sleep just savage <laughs> And then like went traveling and stuff and like kind of just like fucking got uncomfortable and it was like a year and a half ago i'd say i was in australia and i went and took a client call at like two in the morning and i got lost in sydney no wi-fi the fucking 4g didn't work and i spent the whole night out walked around the whole of sydney i was down in sydney opera house myself i was just like out all night and then i found a gym and trained at like 4 a.m because i could get in it's like no fucking sleep, no fucking problem, anytime, any place, anywhere. I can do this. Mm. And it was like after the the ultra marathon, after doing all the travel and building the business, and be able to wake up at three in the morning, take client calls, and just all this shit, all this shit, and then not drink, not take drugs, not do. I started building a lot of like trust with myself, and it was like, but it's hard to do. But then I was like, I feel so good when I do it though. Yeah. And I started just hunting it, you know. That's it. I think when you. I would say for someone who's not sure how to, you know, get that confidence and build a relationship with pain to, to the point where they love the process. Cause like we're always talking about love the process, just it's flow state. Da, da, da. But if someone's not there, you've got to start mega small like you did. And then when you start stacking small wins day by day, just really simple inputs, like so basic, waking up early, doing what you say you're going to do, training, hitting your macros, getting organized quitting on the vices when you start doing that one week in four weeks in six weeks in you start seeing wins and now you can associate the pain of the inputs with the wins Mm. and then whenever you come to something where you think or you perceive it as painful you want to do it because you're like oh this means i'm going to gain again like i'm a bit psychopathic with pain i just want to do anything that's hard it's like even the workouts even back in the day, I wouldn't really, I, I just love training for the the pain and the pump and the initial mm. like frequency 
of like, oh shit, I'm on. Like I turned, mm-hmm. turned on and ready to go. But a lot of people are like, I'm, arms are a bit sore today. And I'm like, fucking let it go more then. Yeah, you know, I'm a bit, a bit tender. It's like my elbows hurt. You know, I'm, I'm crushing burpees first thing in the morning. And I'm like, my joints are a bit more. <laughs> I get buzz out. Well, we're here tonight. Like, yeah. You know, doing this and what, like the conversation really just went, yeah, let's do it. Like, it's late. So it's like coming up 10 o'clock at night, kind of messed up about the times a wee bit. I'm flying out tomorrow. I'm like, fuck it, we'll do it. Nighttime podcast. Normally, me and you'd be, be tuck, bad tucked up in bed. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we chamomile tea and fucking blue, blue light blockers on, ready for an early start, you know, but we'll most likely both get up at the same time tomorrow and just get on with it. Cause like, yeah, of course. The, the job has to be done. But that'll be another box ticks. Yeah. More confidence, more win. Yep. You do you just get into a flow state. I can't leave it now. Like I find it extremely hard to do normal things now. Mm-hmm. Or what most people would perceive as normal, you know, the lifestyle stuff. Yeah. I I like like how it makes me feel, but a part of it as well is how I want others to see me as well. I, my clients get a lot from seeing me do the morning process when i document it, i share it in the group as yeah. well with them and they're like fucking there goes again because see if they see me do a workout and it's maybe super early in the morning or night time and they're like going to take that day off mm. when they know they shouldn't they see it and they're like nah fuck i'm it's I'm course correction it. yeah it's, every, the day one for that. every day one percent every day one percent and then that's associated with you for sure because well. like 80 percent of communication is visual so like people can listen to a podcast right now and they go, oh, I'm all motivated. And then tomorrow they don't. But like when they can see you doing what you talk about, that's actually a lot more impactful. Mm. That's why your daily stories are so important and people neglect them. They don't Massive. post what they're doing. Massive. I think a lot of coaches these days don't even have an aspirational enough lifestyle to post. And I don't mean that as like all these swanky things, but like they don't have the physique these days. They don't have the work ethic. They don't have the, they don't have like, I was speaking to another, I was on a podcast this morning super early and I was, I was saying this, but think about people that are super inspiring in life. What makes them inspiring? They do hard stuff. They get up early, they read, they go these runs. They're talking about fucking gratitude. No, why, why is that so hard for normal people to comprehend that that's what it will inspire you if you take action on these things? It's like, just do that, try it. And you most likely improve your mental health. You'll feel fucking yeah, better. Yeah, like actually just become the guy you'd want to work with. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. To, yeah, like we can go nerdy on business and we can go just keep it real on business. And if someone was to say, right, I need one piece of advice. My piece of advice would be become the guy that people actually want to work with. Like it's that simple. It's too simple. Most people want to know the how to, but they don't want to know like who do I need to be. Yeah. And that's the answer is like, it is 90% who you become mm-hmm. and 10% strategies. Now without the strategies, yeah, it's useless, but you have to become the guy you need to be to get the stuff done and that people are inspired by. And it's not hard like to stand out in 2024. <laughs> you've just got to do work. Yep. Like that's it, which is scary. Yeah, it's like if there was two guys in a room, like let's say me and you, Tom, are on this podcast. <laughs> We're 35, 40 pounds overweight. Mm. Wouldn't hit. Would it? Nah, it's little <laughs> saggy tits coming down. <laughs> it just would it just wouldn't no. It just, it just wouldn't and like fucking love ain't lies, you know. You want to be able to tell a client like, bro, you're 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 where you're at because of where you're at. These habits you've been doing, they don't they don't suit you anymore. If you want to change, you need to change what your the inputs and the outputs, etc. And it's uh, especially for coaches as well. Everyone's went uh, a bit too compassionate. You know? I think the biggest problem with coaching in the coaching industry these days is because there's all these guys now coaching coaches. They've made it very commercial. They've made it very graphics and how to and all this step by step bullshit, right? Where in real, it's we need a three step funnel. It's really simple that actually hits human needs and you just become the fucking guy that people want to work with and you understand that you have to serve instead of ask. And when you serve an audience you actually care about and you know what they're struggling with, you know where they want to get, you know what the pain points are 
and you're actually an inspirational person for them, you can't not grow a business to keep it as most simple. But it's gone so nerdy and like tacky. Like mm. it's the most tacky industry now, the fitness industry. It's embarrassing. Like I don't associate with it. I'm like, yeah. I'm not I'm not a fucking online coach. Leave me the fuck out of that. Even though what I effectively do at the heart is coaching online. I'm like, do not call me an online coach. Because the industry is ruined by people that don't have fitness businesses coaching it from a textbook. I'm like the only person sh someone should actually go to to grow a coaching business is people who actually have the businesses and not even just have the businesses, but a business which is aligned to their values, to their morals. Because how many, how, many, how many business coaches do you see these days that have the most disgusting page it's like a jack in the box. It's like clown, like fucking. <laughs> yeah, bad reputation. Like no one would want to be them. I'm like, don't work with anybody who you wouldn't want to be. It's that sure. simple. And it comes back to what we said: become, become, become the guy mm -hmm. that people actually want to work with. Because most people don't use the brain. They go into somebody who isn't somebody they want to be like. They don't want to have the business like them. They don't want to have the lifestyle like them. But they go into these people. And then they're expecting that now they create their dream life, which isn't that. No, if you're looking at this guy with X, his blueprint will get you X. But if you don't want to be that, you shouldn't go there. It's like going to university, listening to a depressed man driving a Toyota, and then expecting from that a seven-figure business. Yeah, it's like, like It's the same in online coaching. Massive. Don't go to someone. And even, even with niches. If you want to get in shape, go to someone who has the paradigm, the mindset that aligns with how you want to do it as well. Awesome. So if you want to do it and have it catered around your business and your lifestyle, go to someone who's achieved it that way. Because how many times have you heard of someone that's like, oh, I went to this bodybuilder and he says it's this, 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 and then that gives a bad reputation. But it's like, he's not doing anything wrong, but he, they should only be working with bodybuilders. Like, it doesn't matter any industry in coaching, go to someone who is who you almost want to become and lives a life how you want to live and has achieved it how you want to achieve it. You got to follow the breadcrumbs, you know, and there's going to be arrows and everyone's back and it's like, okay, he's got the wounds. Okay. If I go to him, I can avoid these, you know, because a lot of, I've been in like a lot of rooms and groups and whatnot. And even let's say the mentors will be like, don't stop posting your workouts and stop posting your content like this because you know clients don't want to see that you know so no you're all your all the mentors clients are fucking out of shape coaches so of course no one wants to see an out of shape guy try <laughs> maybe i could go down a rabbit hole here and just start butt hurting people but you get where i'm coming from mm -hmm. you know it's like you, you got to be the inspirational leader and you got to be the person that you know holds the mirror up for your clients and fucking make sure they see themselves for who they are so they can take them back and change from your coaching, you know? And as you said, it has to be aligned as fuck. And one thing that me yeah. and you've been working on is like just not being like everyone's just be you. Be as much of you as you possibly can. Yeah. And remove all the... the way we both fucking made mistakes at doing in the past, you know? Just do it unique, do it right, do it off your own terms. And like since I've been doing that... Bro, it's just, it's a different way, man. It's first principle thinking. It's like using your own mind to just think, how could it be done? Whereas everyone else just looks at the whole industry and just goes, oh, everyone else acts like a dickhead on social media. I need to do that as well to be successful. And that's actually what makes you unsuccessful because now you just like, you want to be the black sheep in a field of white sheep because then you stand out. Whereas if you're just everyone, you're just compared. You want to remove all competition, but like you were saying about the guys out of shape, I mean, I think these mentors for people where they teach them all the, the weird nerdy shit, which doesn't do anything and they make them look like dickheads. I think the people who are really fat and the people who are trying to claim they're a coach and just don't walk the walk, they need that. But if you want to build a business authentically and you want to be yourself, it's very easy if you actually become the guy and you can be yourself. Whereas you are going to need all the stupid, retarded strategies where you look <laughs> like a dickhead if you look like a dickhead. The realignment formula. 
Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> like I've, I've been in so, I say so many, I've been in a good couple and there's like, there's almost like a, a script for every issue. So you can literally just run this business while you sit back in your like chair like Cartman in fucking South Park and try to coach these people online, never jump on a loom, never jump on a call. And it's just like a wee voice, not a wee message or like a copy paste. And it's like, that's not coaching. See, when you, you are 100% yourself, like I can open my phone and just, I'll chat to any one mm. of my clients all day fucking long and just course correct and guide and make them, make them fucking do the work with me, you know? Because like I show up for me as much as I do so I can show up for them. So they can show up for everyone that they need to serve in their life. And you know what it's like? See, when you drop someone that fire and they're, they're lit the fuck up and like, you and the fucking man, let's go. That's that's changed their their day. That's changed their family. That's changed mm-hmm. their relationship with their missus for that night. How they may be showing up as a teacher, maybe going out to school, a guy going out to work. That, just because you are on your game and you're switched on, that just fucking impacts everyone. I think it's like... You want to change the world, change one person at a time, you know, just yeah. focus on the one. That one, will spider one. web out though. Cause if you change one, they'll yeah. change another. Like how many times have you coached somebody and then they'll be like, Oh mate, my wife now wants to get in shape or my brother now wants to get in shape. It's like yeah. a huge knock on. So if you're coaching, let's say a hundred people on this semicircle, you're really impacting maybe a thousand, Yeah, which is crazy. But going back to the business mentor stuff, do you know what I think is really unethical? just expanding on what you were saying. I don't like how they almost allow themselves to coach or mentor people who are clearly completely out of shape and have no no idea what they're doing. Like it's, it's they'll just do anything to take money. And I'm like, now you're making them look like a dickhead talking about the top three tips to lose body fat when they're fat. If anyone inquires for my CEO, they go through quite a brutal like, I want to know exactly when, where, you, where you are right now. I want to know what you've done. I want, to, I want to know what your strengths are, what your skills are. And then I'll guarantee you that you're going to do well. And not everyone needs to be CBOM. That's not what I mean. But yeah. you've got to be literally living what you're going to teach. And I think the business mentorship is just like anybody with a heartbeat can be this coach and make 10 grand a month or make 20 grand a month. And I think it's the most unethical thing ever. It's like, all you're doing is making them look like a dickhead. And those guys are looking in the mirror thinking, fuck, I don't even like my body. My body felt like, how can I coach this? And it's like, yep. they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be coaches. I literally tell people go back to phase one, personal development, physique, mindset, performance habits. And I actually shift people. I'm like, look, I know you want to give me money for this, but you're not, you need not really. to go here first. Yeah. I think like uh, there's a stabilization phase everyone needs to go through, like rock solid foundation before they build and scale and do anything else. And like a lot of these coaches will probably churn in the industry and just give up because they're like been promised a dream from a mentor, but the mentor will never say to them, listen, it's not a business problem. It's a person problem. Yeah. You're out of shape, dude. Go work in your fucking six pack, calorie deficit. You need to look lean. Like the pe- the people who crush it in fitness always have like a sick physique. Like I grew up in the era of like Greg Platt. I used to watch all his motivational videos. He's a boy, always ready year round. He was the guy, drop a high, he'd do the shoot, he'd do the thing. That's what I, that's what I believe what fitness is like. It's like you want to be the guy. I think <laughs> these days it's even more, I think you even need more traits. So back in the day, I think you just needed a physique. Yeah. These days you're not even competitive with just a physique you need the physique and the personal development. So you've got to be able to show that you're in great shape or whatever is perceived as great shape for your audience. You know, if you're a runner or a hybrid or a bodybuilder or lifestyle, whatever that is, you've got to lead from the front with the aesthetic. But you've also got Mm -hmm. to have the mindset, the wisdom to speak on, to inspire people. I think your voice is more powerful these days, but you can't then just have too many people then think, oh, I can just have the voice. And maybe copy a conversation me and you have said on our YouTube channels, but then the same thing doesn't hit when you're fat. The same thing doesn't hit if you, if you've not built the business already. So you've got to you've got to become the guy. All boils back down to the simple yeah. stuff. I always say across the board, it has, it has to be across board. Every aspect of your life, I think like a rising tide lifts all ships. You know, so one area is good, okay, hold steady, get the other ones up. 
because then you've got a horizontal line and mm. i always think like success here personal development here stack the personal development horizontal run at the success you want you know because so many guys are like they, they start here they want to be here they meander all the way all the way to try to get to the goal they waste all the time the attention the energy the effort all the shiny objects and stuff in the way and they're like they try to be so many different people along the way and I, i've been there you know I've, yeah oh, look at this guy maybe i bet him try this try this try this the i think like a rocket fucking going into space you fucking let go of the thrusters i think you said something like that to me once it's like you know once it hits orbit let's go the fucking thrusters and other jets and it's like it's just flown now because it's got rid of all the fuck success love subtraction you know and it just flows but you need mm. to get what all the get rid of all the dead weight that's weighing you down because if you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like granular fucking and this shouldn't be here these wee nipples why are they inverted where's my fucking vein in my arm fucking we checking like you need to change so I, I used to look at myself in the mirror Tom, when i was a wee, wee guy like 15 16 getting into the gym i was 40 kilo like you were you were small as well skinny mm. but you were a fucking tall guy i was a lamp post bro you know i was like the other way you know proper like wee skinny chubby skinny fat guy i was like how the fuck am i changing this and i've said that for like 11 years now and it's like yeah okay 11 years of doing something it's fucking paying off but i think <laughs> a lot of guys do maybe one photo shoot and they're like they'll recycle the photos for their entire fitness business until they leave after four years because they've never made growth you know and it's i think it's pretty fraudulent <laughs> that's why I, do you know what i personally we had this conversation the other week i personally don't even market or do the photo shoot when i see companies doing like group photo shoots of like how many people in a photo shoot you just attract a certain person that wants to get shredded or lose as much body fat as possible in eight to 12 weeks you put them on a really unsustainable program that most people drop out of anyway like i see it all the time guys come to me and they're like oh i've done this photo shoot with this person i actually dropped out it was just i was throwing up in the gym and like i was fainting because i was on like 1200 calories i'm like what are you like it's not sustainable like do you want this physique for like one day for a picture to put on your instagram or do you actually want to look like that all the time me and you we don't prep into shoots we just do a shoot mm -hmm. like maybe we want to clean it up over two weeks and sharpen stuff up but your life's just a shoot so i want to coach guys to shred the body fat and build the tissue reverse it back up and then go through a performance block and then optimize their mindset and how they operate and how the responding to the conscience like actually now taking bigger moves and when someone's set on like a life success and their body is the vehicle to doing that you're working with people for a long time on big goals and that's fulfilling and you get to take people on a big journey there is not nothing fulfilling about taking someone on a photo shoot prep i used to yeah. do that so it's like people may say <clears throat> oh that's you know contradicting yourself you used to do photo shoot prep. i did used to do that and i realized very soon that that weren't my purpose mm -hmm. Like I, I will, I will, well, I can't even speak. I will run photo shoots with my guys again and we'll do them. But the way I'm going to frame them are going to be far different because I've, I've had great clients, you know, you're working with them year, year and a half, personally developed them, working on their business, their relationships, career. And it's like, this is sick. This is working really well. Everything's going to plan. Great report and connection. They do a photo shoot and they've like, they reach the peak amount stupid because they think they've completed something. People think they won way before they've won, don't they? And they do this and they get a couple of photos of some validation that Instagram's fucking popping. Bro, you've done it. You... And then they're like, yeah. And then they start whacking down these fucking like silly cakes. Like these big fucking loaves of biscuits and shit. And it's like, okay, why are you not messaging them back? Why are you not checking anymore? And it's like, you know, I've taken it easy. It's like, bro, you've been taking it easy for a fucking month now. Checking. You've taken it easy for 25 fucking years, bro, until yeah. you start this. And then it's like they do the, the shoot and they've gained fucking like 10 kilo off the back. And it's like that is, I've been there before. I don't know if you've rebounded off the back of a shoot before. I've rebounded. I didn't get fat, but I've rebounded. I've, I've got fucking fat and I fucking jumped on like SARMs and shit. And I've like <laughs> done stupid stuff off the back. Cause I'm like, yeah. right, ride this way, baby, take it all the way. But again, it's just a mindset thing. It's like I was telling myself a story that this is fine because of this reason, but it's never fine. Because consciously I was fighting against it, but I was just again using another vice to push it off, push it off, and this was food this time or something. So 
I think for a lot of people don't have the emotional awareness to even handle a massive body transformation if it's done in too short a period of time. I think it's just open the time horizon and give the space and the time to build. You know? Stupid. It's like saying, oh, I built my business to 100K a month and now I do zero. Oh, for and sure. holding on to it. Oh, but I used to do 100K a month. But you did that one month and now you got no money, So, it, but it's not fine. Yeah. It's still broke now. Like You need to work it up gradually and then just cruise control. Mm -hmm. and then refine and optimize the the structure you would take with a physique and your body and your mind is no different to with a business you just want it to be a nice linear line and then refine it and tune it like, like build that. build the f1 car and then tune it mm -hmm. whereas most people just want to just go like that in and out yeah build like a fucking dump truck <laughs> that's even fucking move nah i get that man i get that so relationships in mm. let's dive into that bro i'm thinking your 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 partner like online presence is pretty like mysterious you mm. don't really do the whole i'm actually not with her anymore no no sorry to hear that mate <laughs> <laughs> that is, sorry to hear that. is that a, a recent thing chill kind of maybe amicable Honestly, she's a very good girl. Okay. Like, it, there's no hard feelings with it all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bro, bro it's absolutely... I, I, I couldn't give a fuck about it. No, it's absolutely cool. She's a good girl, but... I'm actually glad this came up because I was going to do a YouTube video on this. Okay, okay. So, I think a big thing a lot of men struggle with... I will loop back around to this. A lot of guys, I get it all the time in YouTube comments and DMs and even clients, and they're like, oh... You know, I'm feeling down and feeling depressed and just can't get, I broke up with my missus and like she was the one and all this stuff. I just can't get back going. And I actually did a post on Instagram today about like fuck, ther fuck therapy. Like therapy for a guy is just do the work and get around guys with a strong mindset who will show up and hold you to a high standard no matter what. It's not saying that, you know, what you've gone through isn't hard. Guess what? It's going to be fucking hard. But you've got to show up either way and being in the process, like doing more personal development will never make you feel worse. Whereas if you sit there like this, it's going to make you feel worse. Yep. Right? Yep. So have your 20, I, I always say this, have a 20 second rule, 20 seconds, feel what you want to feel. Then you go bang, straight back into it. I can have had the biggest arguments ever. I don't argue, so that's an exaggeration. But let's say I've had a disagreement. And I have a YouTube video in my diary that I said was getting done at 11 a.m. This could be happening at 10.59. Halfway through it, I'll say, I'm leaving. I've got a YouTube video. Like, you've got to be able to do that, right? But it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you're with them or you're not with them. You've got to just be able to stay process focused and not, not allow emotions to control, to control actions. And then also, if you do break up with a girl... Like what's taking time off going to do? What's feeling sad going to do for you? For sure. Like nothing. Like what people don't realize is there's 8 billion people on the planet and 8 billion people have all broken up with someone. Get the fuck over it. Yeah. Like it's the most common problem on the entire planet. Like the most common thing is someone gets with someone and it doesn't work. Right? Like in my situation, to answer your question, very good girl ticks 99.9% .9 of boxes, but just energetically and frequency wise and alignment wise on a few things like that would just keep coming up and not arguments, but just disagreements around certain things that I know for the long game. Yep. If I'm thinking kids, I'm thinking family, I'm thinking all of that in the future. It's not aligned. And I think most people then hold on and hold on and hold on and hold on. And there is, it, the, then there's the decision or, or the discussion around, do you keep working on it? How do you know when to keep working on it, when to end it? I work on it for X amount of time. And if I don't see change, well, then I just say, okay, I, I complete full respect, like nothing against her at all, but we're just not compatible for that. And you have to then be able to also have the muscle where you can say, look, I love you. I respect you but we're not compatible and I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to waste your time. And that's it. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Like you can feel sad, but what's going to happen? Like yeah. I would rather 
be on a high frequency. Like success is subtraction. I don't mean that like, oh, every person you get with, you should get rid of them. I don't mean that. But if something's not aligned and is taking away from you, not because they want to take away from you, but there's just something not quite aligned, which means you can't just be fully you. You've got to do whatever it takes. I think it's a really mature way of looking at it. Mm. <laughs> it's funny, man. Put you in a, a room of another like 24-year-old, they'd be like, holy fuck her, man. Hey, did all that shit. Bro, superb, man. Superb answer. I think that makes complete sense. Um, that's that's sick, man. That's sick. Yeah, I mean, me maybe five years ago would have been a little bit different. Yeah. But I was still pretty mature with stuff. But no, now, I think the main thing is about leaving it on terms with like respect. You know, I, I want to be able to be five years down, 10 years down and no one say a bad word. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, for me, respect. You just got to be able yeah. to be like, and, and also it shows your character. If you, if, if you hold yourself to that high standard and they're like, this guy doesn't mess about. You got to stand on your own two feet, man. You really do. Because see, if you were to hold on to that and like that, like you said, you know, try and make it work, try and make it work. There's a time, you know, and it's usually after the first fucking time, personally, for me, that if that happens again, <laughs> it's cut. <laughs> or if, it, if like, I think a lot of guys would hold it and hold it and hold it and they, they stretch your part, then they break up, get back together, break up. And nothing ever changes. It's the same shit, different pants. And every most guys are going to face all of this because if you're on a fast pace growing, and and what people, people might be like, oh, Tom, you've got to a certain level, but I'm growing consistently at a certain level like mm. i personally developed a lot since january and i've known this girl since just before january so yeah. like i've grown a lot in that time frame and every single day every single week i'm like okay i'm becoming this guy i need to hold myself to higher standards and you can create a disalignment if, if i'm trying to be here and i'm not saying to my partner oh you have to be me because it's a woman right but I'm saying I'm wanting to hold myself to a high standard. Can you align and hold yourself to a higher standard? And I think sometimes when you try to raise somebody to their highest standard, it can look like an attack on them when it isn't. Yeah. Holds the mirror up a, a little bit, even yeah. though it's like in their head, they're winning yeah. in their own thing. But then it's like... But mm. if they're not ready to, to make that change, which again is absolutely fine. Like everyone moves at their own speed. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't say I'm an easy person to be with. I wouldn't say many um, crazy focused entrepreneurial people are easy to be with mm -hmm. uh, for a normal girl who's not been with someone like that before. So I would just say you've got to just be prepared to do what it takes and don't ever live in resent is what I think. So I'm like, look, I know what happens if I'm trying to be here and, and you're not matching and I'm never, I would never say to a girl like, look, you're a dick because you're not aligning with me or you don't agree with this. I'm like, look, this is where I'm going. And if you want to align with that, that's amazing. And if you don't, I won't think any worse of you, but it's not compatible. Yep. But if that happens, if you stay with that person that you do love and respect, if you stay with them too long, you've got this gap, which gets bigger. And then you've got like a resent and like a hate that shouldn't even be there. And then you actually just break and end on bad terms. And I think most people wait for that, for it to get nasty yeah. to walk away. Whereas I'd rather just catch it while it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Like you saw me and my me and my partner like, what, like a week ago? Two two weeks ago, maybe. Yeah, when just when I arrived. It was chill. You were, you know, sitting with each other, doing what you're doing in the gym, help film yeah. this. Dude. It was just like, oh, cool. And you if know. I saw it tomorrow, it would be pretty much the same. Yeah. I think that, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. I think uh, this day and age, though, like men, really do struggle with the real talk, the real conversations. They can't look. They're checking I think the it's their own self-respect. Yeah. They don't they don't back themselves enough. They're like, I want to wait till this gets to a crisis before I take action. Till the house is fucking burning down and she's already sucking some other guy's dick. And then I'll break up. I with think her. deep <laughs> down, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think too many guys wait for that, for that like hate and anger. So it's like a debt. Is it basically because they can't make decisions for themselves. They need a definitive, okay, it's done. She's fucking someone else now. Whereas if you are a disciplined guy and you're self-aware self and you know exactly where you want to be, hold yourself to a high standard, respect yourself, you can create that definitive answer 
for yourself. And you can say, look, this is tough. I love this person, not compatible. And I'm going to make this decision to respect myself and respect her. For Whereas sure. too many people just wait for that bomb. Think, think about in the UK, you know, you got the classic man, classic chick, they're out in their night out. Fucking get who's talking to another guy and the relationship's fucked anyway. You know, mm. we just discussed it, like whatever. And then, you know, big alpha guy comes, you told him I'm and the big fight breaks out and then they break up. And it's like, he was just seeing that, but it could have been a friendly conversation, but he's looking for a way to cause a problem to either run away from his, the shit relationship that he's already in because he's got the mortgage, he's got the fucking, you know, step kid or something. Then he's. I think a lot of guys fear being alone as well. Yeah. They either hold on to something until it dies and fucking suffocate it or they'll push it away. But to, the, 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 the sooner in life that the lads chase pain in any realm, like with the habits, the physique, moving away like even when i moved to dubai oh man i knew nobody like i came out here on my own 22 i think and knew nobody and it was like a, a loneliness but then you really find yourself and who you are and you're doing things on your own you start speaking to new people you f figure out who you are and then when you know you are fine on your own and you are growing on your own and you're on a mission on your own well if you've got a good if you've got like a good partner but like it's not aligned and you know deep down it's not gonna work you are totally cool stepping back out because you're like well i'm fine mm -hmm. might be tough right now but i'm fine and i will continue to grow and something better will come because i know i'm still doing the work i think all the fear comes when they know they're not doing the work. Yep. And they're almost scared yep. of, oh my God, if I break up with this girl now, that means now I'm going to have to start going to the gym more. I'm going to have to start earning some more money because no girls are going to be interested in me because mm. I was comfy and this girl was comfy. And they're, they're like, they fear doing the work. Oh, it's, that's it's actually too accurate of that. It's like, well, they, the girlfriend never said it. And when they hugged the guy and they felt the fat rose, it's comfy. I like yeah. the dad bod. It's like, cool, I'll stay fat and weak and look like an idiot and eat my fucking hot dogs or whatever. Mm. But no, you're you're completely bad. You know, it's kind of psychopathic about me though, like as not you, ideal. You're, you're psychopathic? I yeah. I'd have never got that. <laughs> as 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 bad as it sounds though, like and as tough as it were, you know, like I know as a girl it you feel a lot of emotions, but I kind of like, because of that relationship with pain, like I kind of just sat there and was like, yeah, this isn't ideal. But again, it was a decision. It was my choice. It was like, I, like I've like i asked for this from the universe. Like mm -hmm. I, I've made this happen. But then I was kind of like, pain, let's go. It's, it's, a, it's a growth thing, but that, that's a positive mindset truly. Because you could sit and dwell and you could get the fucking tail out and a wee fucking spoon and sit and watch fucking love actually like a gimp. <laughs> I say that probably yeah this was this uh, nothing about but, my day has changed one one bit yeah i wouldn't even notice well i mean it was fully know. finalized this morning yeah like she literally only like moved out this morning yeah 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 and like i wouldn't be any different and i think that's what separates the men from the boys is being able to you get man childs you know that would be in fucking... well, this could be this could be a two-year down spiral for some guys which is crazy. Be crazy like whereas the same pain for me could be like a 1.2 accelerator. So like the gap of some guy, if, if we've got a, a middle line here, some guys go back, which you can, that's a big gap you've not created. Such distance. The people at the top in anything, they've all experienced the same pain, if not more pain, they just use the pain differently. Yeah. Spiral up or spiral down and mm. spiral up's the only answer. I like the callus that gives me the pain, you know, it's kind of mental physical toughening I mean, well you wouldn't be here right now if you hadn't experienced pain that's it. what would you say is the most painful mm. <laughs> why would you say you're here right now what pain has uh, driven you there was i had i've had three i call it my three chances to be honest mm. that made me wise in the fuck up right yeah let's hear them so one of them was actually maybe four three or four i went to four of them my mom my, my mom got really ill and um, she had cancer, like terminal. She was on her way out. She's still with us, luckily, you know, when I was super, like maybe 14, 15 or something like that. It's a very similar story to mine. Yeah. But brother was like, he just moved away to London. Sister lives in Australia. Dad was like a, a like a 
cop on like night shift, like constable mm. guys, super busy. Just me. Yeah. And I had no clue what was going on. I was just a skater. You know, at the time I just spent 10 hours a day skating. Did you feel a big weight on your shoulders as a young guy? Yeah, yeah, shoplifting, fucking started smoking super young, wrong crowds, all this kind of stuff. Good crowds and wrong crowds, you know, but I was around older people Mm -hmm. a lot, like (laughs) the weird older skaters that were like 30 and I was like 15, but I would be like cutting a bit with them. (laughs) So exposed to a lot from a younger age, drinking drugs, all this other stuff. Yeah. So that, but then I kind of like, I had to fend for myself, I guess, you know, St- I started like selling the stuff I was stealing, doing the stuff, like yeah. making a bit of money. And um, so that was a pivotal moment. You know, I'd say the kind of, re- the sobering fact that my mom could fucking pass. And then a few years later on, once I'd been coaching and PT and super busy working between three different gyms, the one that I just kind of opened that had like little to no clients yet, a one in Glasgow and one in another town. So I would coach all my clients in a triangle and i was like so fatigued and burnt out living in the city i fell asleep at the wheel one day and um when i was driving i saw this on your story the other day yeah fell asleep at the wheel um head on collision like 70 miles an hour i woke up down a ditch ambulance pulling me out car was like snapped in half I've, i was covered in like coffee I thought it was blood when I woke up. I was like, I'm fucked. But I saw the other car and I, I'd nearly killed someone else. But I, I managed to like run over to the guy and just like he got out of his car and I was just hugged him and I was like, I'm so happy you're alive because he had a family. So I could nearly killed a guy mm. pretty much. Well, you know, up. that woke me the fuck up. <laughs> you know, another time, and I think I don't know if it was between then and there because it was like, used to smoke weed, we'd do anything for like a quick buck, I guess, you know. I coached this kind of like drug dealer guy for a bit. He was like, I'll give you free weed if you come pick me up and do this this run with me. So I did it. I picked him up and we had to go pick up like a, a guy who was on the list for like murdering someone. So I had a murder in my car, like a, tr- a top drug dealer. We had to drive up to this like CD dairy farm and the what was happening was the guys at the dairy farm were dropping up, like giving the guy I was with drugs and returning for the guy to get fucking done. Fuck. And I was there and the police came. <laughs> <laughs> and I, was, I, had, I had something like 30 grand over drugs in the car at the time. And I was breaking it. So I was like, okay, strike number two. <laughs> I don't even know if I can even share this stuff, you know? Yeah, like, of course, man. But like, that was a big one. And that stuck with me a long time. Because yeah. that's when I was trying to build my business. So I was I was living a double life, man. I was living, trying to be coach, trying to be motivator guy, doing the fitness. And then on the other side of town, I was like this guy. So I was like really split between two sides because the minute I wasn't coaching, I was like wrong around the wrong people and stuff. And it mm. was like fucking with me big time. Environment's huge, man. Absolutely huge. And like after the car crash, after that, that drug thing, after, and this was like through pandemic, you know, was living with my message. She had, she moved in early before I wanted her to move in. Toothbrush was in. She was just like, it just happened. I was living with a good mate as well. The time was just too close for comfort. I, I wanted to fucking kill myself, mate. I was just like disappointed with who I was. I was like, if this is what success is, I don't like it. Cause I had, I'd, I'd got the gaff. You know, the balcony. Mm. I had like a decent enough car. What you thought you wanted. I had like loads of, cl- I like got to a point, I had loads of clients. I was fat, I was in shape, still smoking hundreds of weed though. Had the ghetto, living with my mates, kind of penthouse in Glasgow. Stood in a balcony one day and I was like, I'm doing this. Like I was there, Do you know, I had, like pumping full of adrenaline, like now's the time, now's the time. And then my mate came through and he was like, dude, what are you doing in this balcony? It's fucking cold it again. Like, come on, mm. we're, we're chilling through here. Me and your missus, like, come on. And I was like, Phew. and I just went in and <laughs> up here sat there. And then th- they were like four things for me. I'd say the mum one wasn't really like a, that was external. The other three were my, my doing. I'd say I put myself in those situations, you know. Whereas the mum one, that was like, 
that was tough as well. That was a bit like I had to kind of learn to like be my own person there. But those three were like, you've had your three strikes, wisen the fuck up and let's get to work properly. Would you say now. the thing with your mum was more like a constant, even when you weren't aware, it was like a weight on your shoulders because it was just there and you're just kind of waiting and you're not sure what's going on. That's yeah. what I found. But then you can have certain instances like the others where it's just like a, a sniper. It's, it's in like, your face. wake up. The mum one, definitely. Like if you've experienced it in a similar, mate, you don't really know how to understand. I was young as well. Yeah. You know, you tell it, you try to tell other people. I remember the first person I told was like- I didn't like, talk about it. Mate. Yeah, I didn't really, but I told like it wasn't a close friend. It was like a, a skate friend. And I was just like, oh yeah. But he was like, what's up with you? I, like, I think my mum's got cancer. And he was mm. like, fuck off. <laughs> I was like, no, like, <laughs> bro, I think it's an actual problem. And because like my family, my dad was super busy. Mum and uh, sister and brother were elsewhere. She's giving me like empty it's house, mum and work. hospital. And I'm like, what's what's going on? So just, you start learning to cook and start doing all my own shit. Yeah. And I guess it kind of like, kind of grew me up a bit faster as well. And then seeing my mum, you know what it's like, me when you go to a hospital, it's like you see your mum there and she's like emaciated, fading away almost. And you're like, it's awful. Rough, mate. Mm. Super rough. So. Those, those those four things were like big. What advice would you give to a guy to have the big change in life that you've had without having to run into these big problems and wait on these big problems? Because I think a lot of people do. They wait for the huge breakup before they take action. They wait for the getting arrested. They wait for these things when in reality, they could do it right now. Mm -hmm. So what words would you say if it was to your older self so you could avoid everything you've kind of gone through mm -hmm. or the avoidable things? I'm glad you kind of framed it there to the older self because like, I feel I can actually just speak down to my mm -hmm. younger self because I think it, it generally just does come down to respect factor. Like how much do you really respect you? I used to hate me. I have even posted content about that before. Mm. Like I used to hate me. I just didn't really like, didn't feel like I was gonna amount to anything. Failed school, was shit, failed PE. <laughs> Do you not you find know? it kind of crazy though now how like I know when I was that guy, I know we had like Instagram and stuff. It was all newer and stuff then, but like I know when I was that guy going through that stuff with my mom and whatever and everything you went through there weren't anybody talking crazy level value and personal development and authentically anyway no. on social media. So I think that's one of the, the best things. It's like you get to be selfless, but it's also nice intrinsically as well, knowing mm -hmm. when you see the feedback and there are, I know most of the guys we work with are in the 20s and 30s, but you do get the guys who are 14, 15, 17, who watch the content, who it hits hard and, there was the the influencers who lived the lifestyle and traveled to the Maldives and Dubai and stuff. There was a bit of that going on. But there was no raw, authentic, real talk, real value that would actually change your life. It was more entertainment content. Yeah. Whereas these days, there is a little bit more coming through. Not loads of it. That's obviously what we're trying to do here. Yeah. Doesn't get pumped out as much. The Maldives videos click like more clickbaitable, yeah. like rather than you sitting in a fucking dark office. Or like me on my iPhone, just actually like mm. telling it how it is. And just like telling little like short snippet stories about like what the fucking real facts are when it comes to massive, massive change. Do you know what as well? That's just reminded me. I had a comment on YouTube the other day and it was some guy that hit the nail on the head. And he was basically just saying how he was like, this channel has so much value. It does indeed. But he was saying how like, the subscribers and the views, like a few K views on this video. I can't find the exact comment right now, but this guy was basically saying, look, this is this channel, you know, this it's got like three K views, this video. And then there's videos on like the most stupid stuff online with like 20 million views. So I tried. And it's just a sign checking. that people don't want to get results. They want entertainment. And people are just looking for the wrong stuff. So it's obviously uh, important that we try and get it out to as many people as possible, but also people have to want to change themselves. It's like what we talked about with the relationship thing earlier. It's like 
if you try and hold people to a higher yeah. higher standard if they don't want to you can't so all you can really do from our position is inspire walk the path show what we do and people will shift from it and i think in the next 10 years a lot more people will shift i do think the world's shifting it was like a new age will be like almost come from it like all all this kind of like i think the last five years of fitness from like covid to now that's going to die soon i think it's pretty much gone right? it's it's on its way out you can see people clutching at straws grabbing new tactics to try get this next thing cheesy isn't it? and it's fucked you know yeah. I, i've actually brought you five pounds of belly fat to <laughs> to wiggle poke over. in the um, <laughs> bottle <laughs> <laughs> exactly but that that will die out and then the guys like i felt just like see when i came across you dude i was like fuck me this guy gets it you know he's he's posting the stuff that i was like can you even post that at this day and age is that even like then i was like yeah fucking let's roll with it and it's like so authentic so aligned and it solves a problem but it's a longer problem to solve because we know it's a longer journey but we can give the short little tips and tricks along the way for people to actually grow into the person they need to be to solve the main thing in life which is like building the life building the mindset building the physique but it's all, it's all stable like once that's all stable you need everything you don't success. you but there is a definite path to it whereas yeah. that's that's what i don't get like i would be unauthentic to just have the photo shoot product which solves like half of one of many problems where in fact we know right people need habits People then need to build their best body. On top of the best body, they will only then start to build a mind. You can't have a bad, uh, you can't have a great mind on a bad body. Once you've got a good body, your mind will instantly be better. Then you can 10x your mindset and your performance, how you operate. That's part of the problem. But then from there, you then need to build and expand on the personal professional development, yep. build a business and build freedom, build a lifestyle. And not everybody needs to go and earn crazy, crazy money, but like, in my opinion, everybody who has that feeling already in their chest, the bare minimum a guy should be doing is 10 grand a month. I, I, can, I can agree. Next Online so as well. Yeah. Like we were even saying before this, like even if someone doesn't want to be in the coaching space, oh my God, like in within within seven days, I, I could make a business doing 15 grand a month just using chat GPT on my phone. Like it, it's stupid. Like I'm like, can some guys just wake up? like people aren't looking for the basics they don't it's like they don't want to know they're scared of the unknown because again they don't Program. back themselves enough because they don't know themselves That's why it all starts with phase one right it has to start with the blueprint like the, the five the five simple steps the macros the training the, the personal development reflection nailing your mind uh, and fucking waking up early doing the work <laughs> it's like if you do those five things and pretty much every one of my youtube videos goes back to those yeah. they just they end up coming into because i'm like i don't have anything else to say but just boys please fucking do these five things test them if you don't like them that's cool you can stay where you're at but trust me the path will eliminate as you walk it and that self fucking work will equate to the self-worth down the line and you won't know it until it hits you in the face and you're like fuck me i am ready for this next level because when you turn into a 10 out of 10 version of you you're gonna want to have well you have the confidence to start the business to get the check that you want to get to maybe just fucking invest that extra bit of money because you're like you know what i've stacked all this undeniable proof so mm. no one's actually told me i can't achieve this let's go then people should just ask themselves one really simple question which is how could being better make me worse or even the same like how could working on yourself raising yourself to a high standard looking better feeling better being internally better from a health standpoint having a better mindset being around guys who are actually where they want to be, how could that keep you in the same place? <laughs> and they're, and they're so there scratching their heads, I'm not sure. I'm like, that's why I don't do sales calls. Why do I want to sell to you if you're still scratching your head about whether or not you want to look like you've got a pair of bitch tits and you want to be broke all your life? I'm like, no, I'm not here to talk to you. Like, if you can't yeah. figure that out, for you, if you can't look at a guy on the internet who's in the 20s, living in Dubai, there's guys driving around in Lambos every day, and you're the same. These guys are ripped. These guys have got fit chicks. These guys have got loyal partners. These guys are respected by top-end men. They've got money coming in every month. And then you're there in a nine-to-five, broke, average, fat. How can't you want that? 
every man biologically does want that as yeah, well. They, they, People they, just can't be truth, truthful to themselves. I think a problem for me back in the day when I was like getting into all of this was I didn't want to admit that I wanted that. Because it's a problem it was like in the world, man. Societal norms. You know, I was told that, you know, you make your money, you, do, you follow this path that was almost like pre created for you. And I think I started walking that path, but then I cut it. And I was speaking to my mum yesterday, you know, on my birthday, chatting away. She's like, you, you've, you've gone and you've done what you said you were going to do. So what's next? And I was like, I'm just going to 10x it even more. I'm just going to keep hammering it. And because she follows, she like, you know, fucking, you know, follows yeah. the content. She's cool that way. Yeah. You know, um, she's like, you're just on it all the time. Do you ever take this? I was like, there's no, there's no need to. I'm living my, my best life. I really am because everything I'm doing feels aligned right now. Mm. It's like, you work so, but it's, it's not even hard at this point yet. No. And it won't get hard for probably until it's five exercise, 10 exercise, whatever. Because like, I'll just grow with it though. You that's know. why your environment's so important though right because like if we're born like i was born in huddersfield no money right no huddersfield has no money right and if you're being told that oh if you go to uni and you get a two and a half grand a month job that's good that's good for your age tom well done you're earning two grand well if if you were born into a place it's, it's not about the knowledge forget knowledge if you were just born into a place where they said, oh yeah, 10 grand a month is the standard. You're a retard if you earn less than 10. If, if you were born there, everyone would earn 10. Everyone just raises to the standard around them. So let's say there was me, you, two other high-performing lads, and then a guy who's been a bit of a donut. If he just hung around us every single day because we, we're now the standard, it isn't just what people think, oh, I can't get in the room and I don't get the knowledge from them. Just the exposure and the proximity to the people, you will feel so out of alignment, you will just raise to their standards. Yep. And it's not that we've all told him loads of stuff. It's just the proximity. So people should always optimize for proximity to high performers and other guys. And now we've got social media. It couldn't be easier. So when people are like, oh, it's harder don't live near any, I don't know any. I'm like, neither did That's I. Super I just shit. literally went and got in programs and communities where there was guys who were where I wanted to be. Mm. And now, oh my God, I'm like, I remember that one a program I jumped in and I was I was in there and one of the biggest guys in the space was in there and he was doing four mil a month and I'm in a program with this guy. And now that's a standard. So like my head's thinking, well, the baseline I need to get to must be four mil a month because I've been in a room with it now by paying my way into a community, into a room. Whereas if I just looked at everyone around me back in Huddersfield, I wouldn't be any more than three K a month. When you're exposed, you can't be unexposed. You can't. It is, it's almost like a blessing and a curse because like you've seen what's on the other side and people like the grass and the greener on the other side. You never know. It's going to where you water it. But if you're willing to do the work now, you've seen what you've seen, you're going to fucking make something magic happen in your life. You know? More of anything is never a bad thing. You know? no, more, more chicks more so, never got your less chicks. <laughs> more, pro more profit never left you more, never left yeah. you with less money. It's true. It's true. I'd rather have more food in the fridge than none. Exactly. <laughs> you know, everyone can eat. Okay, what income? <clears throat> I know I touched on it briefly about like, I, I said a standard everyone should be at the 10K. Uh, what income do you do you feel like your life started to free up i think i think seeing um like the, the 10k get cracked mm -hmm. when i was like because i i got back i done that during pt sessions you know doing 10k months yeah my know? first 10k was in pt and that was just from raw graft didn't have any time to mm -hmm. spend any money so it was accumulated a lot of uh uh, 10k what? pt for anyone watching is absolutely savage oh it's hours, like it's man. so long yeah i've yeah. just taken a guy actually who quite cool he he worked at the gym he still works at the gym i started at so we both started effectively at the same time and then i worked there for one year went straight up to 10k in four or five months 
rode out a year and then transitioned to fully online after a year and then obviously built to where I am. And he messaged me like three months ago, like, Tom, I'm in the same spot. I'm doing two grand a month. You're killing it. Like, can you help me? So he came in the, my CEO program and he went from two to 9K in six weeks. That changed his life. Yeah, and, and literally, but now the problem we're facing with him is we're working on his online as well. That was 9K just PT. He's got his online as well. Yeah. So we're like, right, let's build you some cash flow up so you've got cash that you can reinvest back into the online side. But the time is crazy. Like it's long. I remember I used to wake up at 3 a.m., sometimes half two. Like it was crazy. I would do some morning admin. I would then... <laughs> go to a home visit 4 a.m and 5 a.m till 5 55. i'd drive five minutes up the road i would do pt sessions from 6 till 11. i would take an hour and a half off to literally go train some days i didn't even take it off to go train i would then work through till gym closed at 10 p.m and then if i hadn't trained i would drive to leeds an hour away 24 hour gym train come back and do check-ins and i would sleep like three hours for that Probably the back six months of me PT and I was gray. Yeah. I was gray. I was a gray guy as well. Yeah. But like you turn it on every every session. It's some new like I had like when I was the busiest admin gym and I was like a unit in industrial estate, kid out some basic stuff, but I literally almost like turned into an acting role when someone came in, boom, 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 follow this. Like almost it was like a a thing I'd got down to a fine art. Of how the clock and it, it, mm. everything was so weird, but it was like I turned myself into like a fucking performing monkey. Honestly, yeah. towards the end, I'll be doing that seventy hours a week. You can't miss for a client. You can't miss, man. And you want to be showing up, showing up, showing up, showing up. It gets to a point when I was getting my wee fucking Mazda too. At the end of the night, you know, winter's night, fucking frostbite off the barbells after 10, 11 sessions, and be like, I have to drive an hour and a half up the road. And I was like, whoa, this is not the life. This, this, I can't, you know, I can't keep doing this. But any PTs out there that are fucking still doing the hard yards grafting, not trying to just jump straight into like, you mm. know, 10K a month online or straight off the, the plane or something. Fair play is, but it's graft. It's graft. I, could, could you go back and do? I was saying this to someone <laughs> the other day, you know, I was saying effectively, the workload I used to do and the conditions I used to do it, in the moment I was in such like a driven energy and I didn't, re I was almost in, I was almost like hypnotized. I was just going through this yep. motion. I didn't really know where it was taking me to. I had a goal, but I was just so in the moment. And I think that's what allowed me to get where I am today because I am very present. Like I know I have a goal in the future, a North Star goal, and I am very clear on my systems, on the daily inputs on how I'm going to get there. But I'm now not, I don't think about that all day. And I also don't think about that all day. I'm literally just here. This is good. Like I find it strange sometimes, if I, even if I'm having a conversation, this is just the standard I hold myself to. This is nothing against people. But when people will be like, oh yeah, this happened yesterday. I'm like, I actually don't care what happened yesterday. I'm like, now. Like I'm such in a now moment. And people can think I'm a little bit savage for that, but I do. I'm just like, I'm I'm in this moment. I know what I'm doing over the next. I'm just so like in this moment. That's it's, it. It's day, day one mindset. I think it's like the, the neutral yeah. thing. You wake up in the morning, alarm goes, you either snooze it or you, you create that deficit of karmic debt or you just step, yeah. step, step all the way to the top. Tax yourself out, comes the end of the day, like tonight when I go up the road, I'll just fucking switch yeah. off and then it's restart, re-go. And today, it, yeah, it happened. It was great. It was a great day, but I'm not, yeah. <laughs> not a single thought. <laughs> I'll just yeah. look at my diary for the next day and I'll be like, that's getting done. Yeah. Yesterday's wins aren't today's wins. For sure, bro. I've even, I, I ran off that philosophy for a while and now I'm in even more of an extreme mindset where it's like, last minute's win isn't this <laughs> minute's win so it's like you're never in a winning mindset you're just in like an attack mode all the time and i've I, I had a morning where i have like kpis for our business and stuff right and there was one morning where obviously i don't do calls and 
there was all these inquiries coming through. I was waking up and I was literally lying there at like 3.40 in bed. And by, I'd actually woken up at two in the night, closed two people at 2 a.m., okay? By 5.50, I'd done like maybe nine grand UK. <laughs> and then, like I could have just sat back then for the day. Some people would sit back for the month. I literally then all day was just attacked. Like I was like, that was last minute's win. It's gone. Like I, as soon as it's just gone, I have no feeling around money. I'm like, there is more people in this world that need help. Like the money sides, I think at the very start, you know, like when we're talking about PT and money and you're working so and you, your hours are crazy. I was that material spender because I needed to feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Whereas my feeling doesn't come from the money now. It comes from the serving and I'm like, I couldn't serve more people with the PT. So I was like, I need the money to feel good because I was at capacity. Yeah. Whereas I know in my business model now, I'm not at, we're so scalable and there's more people in the world we can help. So the money is like, I'm disassociated from it. I'm like, when people come in, it's going to pay me money. Duh. So I feel nothing, but I'm like, but there's still that whole pond over there who have a problem. I can help them fix it. It will change their life forever. And I'm just pissed off that they're still there. Yeah. So I'm sure. so disassociated from all this. And I'm like, yeah, that was last minute's win. We helped one more person. There's still a million over there. But that can leave you in. Sometimes you can get to 7 p.m. You've had a great day. And you're like, not down, but you're just flat. Like I'm a very, I don't know if monotone's the right word, but I'm a very... I'm always within like a threshold. Yeah. I never go crazy high and crazy low. I've got yeah. like this emotional stability where I just keep myself in there. As soon as I want to force out the top or the bottom, I just keep myself in. And I think that's another thing being a partner with me. I'm just in that zone all the time. Yeah. And I'm just like in like a competitive laser focus, like war mode mm -hmm. all the time. And I just don't like, yeah. I, I've got that. See, when I'm like, I'm on work and that's, you know, from a period yeah. of time to a period of time every day. See, when I'm off, I'm a fucking goofball, man. Yeah. I allow that to happen. I just it's good, like, man. It's a good trait. Yeah. I struggle with that. That's probably one of my, if if I was to call it a weakness, that would be my biggest weakness. Yeah. When you were um, saying all that stuff, it's like, it's like, bro, needs a round of golf. <laughs> Go chill out, get a hobby. The you problem know? is, bro, golf went up. But mate, when I used to play golf full time, oh my god, man, I'm so I never, I, bro, I literally just did not enjoy it because I was yeah. just so. But then I, I, I sit back and I go, okay, my work. Do I need to like enjoy every second? I, I know deep down the only moments I enjoy are when I get the messages through. From a client saying, oh, you know, like, look where we've come from, changed my life, I'm moving to wherever, I can now do this, physique looks great, anything like that. I want to see the wins. Like the best I would say I felt last week was when a client said, look, I've just done 7K my first week. And like I win when people win. Yeah, it feel, right? feels good seeing that. Yeah. Whereas I don't win from anything else. Which I get that. I really do. I think as a coach, it's almost your obligation to to live that, live mm -hmm. that way. Um, it's like fluidity. It's like you just, okay, out and out. And it's like, okay, it's working really fucking well because through my teachings, my boys are fucking winning. Therefore, the shit that I'm doing, I can balance Do you know how myself. I feel about my life? Like, I feel like I'm watching myself on a screen the whole time. It's a yeah, video yeah. game. And I'm just using myself as service for my audience mm -hmm. like at the end of the day right there's human needs hierarchy of needs right our needs are all met right so for us to show up every single day at the intensity we do is virtually impossible based on human nature like we have needs so in order to do that and where i think the next level of personal development comes is when you do it to serve other people so i don't miss now because all i'm thinking about is serving new audience serving clients everyone who's watching and every person who will watch in the future i'm like i'm doing this for them mm -hmm. and then i think when you do it for someone beyond yourself i think you won't miss like yeah i do feel like i am just controlling myself through the world not for myself anymore mm -hmm. but yeah i i win off the back of it when you give value out you receive value back in just a law but 
I think you've got you've got to you've got to be that way because when you you put so much fucking value into the world in one given day, and that stacked over ten years, twenty years, it would be ridiculous to not be successful in what 100%. you're doing. And you, I don't know if you're how long a game you're going to play this for, but there'll be an idea or a thought you're going to have, whether it be five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty, whatever, when all of the work will be said and done, and this next chapter will start. And you'll be fucking proud of the man you built through that and he'll be ready for this next thing. And I think that's one of the most exciting parts about it. I feel like I've been through maybe two big transitions. Like I change almost like every fucking month. Like, what percentage into your end goal do you think you are? <laughs> Bro, like I'm in this till I'm fucking a bag of bones, man. Like, I will coach in some capacity. I'd say till I'm fucking... Probably just on more of a scalable level. Yeah, I will coach in some capacity, maybe an element of doing what you're doing to an extent, mm. a wee bit down the line. I feel like there's still a bit of fitness in me that I want to really fucking... Yeah, I think that's crush. a baseline thing that's always going to be there as well. There's steps. I just think you'll be less involved. Yeah, for sure, man. Because like uh, we said, if we're staying true to authenticity and, and what's what men really need, they need body, they need mind, they need performance, they need business. Yeah. And the business side, well, if they want to follow our business model, then we can have a product. Exactly. If they don't, I like I, I openly say to people, regardless, every every true man, body, mind, habits, performance. Mm -hmm. Then once you've mastered that, don't get rid of the first layer of bricks. Keep that. Right. That's the biggest mistake of people make see, see people make. They just get rid of that and think, oh, I've done that now. I mean, that stays as the foundation. You need to keep the beams to build the skyscraper. Sure. Then think about what's your purpose. Some people, it may be coaching. Well, perfect. We can look at that. Some people, it may be, I want to be a trader. I'm like, okay, go and find someone who's walking the walk in trading and go listen to them. Like, it's mm -hmm. not a biased thing. I'm like, go anywhere where there's an expert. 100%. We've got a guy in the program right now who came in and um, does trading. And he's like, I always just keep missing, I always shy away from making the big thing. And we're just focusing so much on the mindset, the habits. Because all, all it is, it's, it's like a fucking flywheel. It's like investing every habit that you put in as an investment. So he needs to trust those habits in himself, therefore back himself, because he wants to leave his nine five. He wants to support his kids, you know, he's uh, split up from his missus. It's like he's scunnered with life. He wants to change it. And he's got this vehicle here, but he's never went all fucking in on it because he doesn't back himself. So it's like we're just building him so he's so unfuckwithable so he can just drop the hammer on that and take it to the moon and it will happen. Yeah. But like you said about where you I'm You've got to become and, undeniable, like completely. Oh, for sure. M the, the, the easiest way for most guys to answer their problems is if you just ask yourself the question, if I was to place myself in a room of 100 high-performing men, would they expect that I have everything that I want? And the answer is no. So level the fuck up. Like if people can just look at you, like right now, if we were walking around the streets in Dubai, people would just expect us to be here. Or even if I went back to the UK and I was in a restaurant in the UK, people would just look at me without arrogance and just be like, he's doing well. Like you hold yeah. an aura and a presence. And I think everything comes back to the foundations, the standards you hold yourself to, the presence you have. And that comes back down to the physique not that not like you need to be a bodybuilder, but you need a great physique, great body, great mind. Hold yourself to a high standard. And if people would look at you and just be like, well, of course this guy is going to be doing well. You will be doing well. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Like, it's that simple. Like, if people can look at you and think, I don't think he does well, you won't be doing well. No, it's, it's <laughs> you wear it. You, you wear what you're doing, you know? Yeah. And as it may not be the most expensive, this or that, the other, but... Like I could, I can fucking wear a Primark black T-shirt and look like I'm killing it. This Just, is the thing, bro. Both yeah. of us now wearing no logos. Back in the day, when I when I needed the validation when I was skin, I had logos everywhere. Fuck, yeah, yeah. You need people to be like, oh, he's doing this. But even when I came here today in the cab, I jumped in. The guy was like, I wasn't going to do another job today, but I saw you and I was like, you look like I worth driving to somewhere tonight. I was like, fucking cool, man. And he's like, what'd you do? What are you up to? And I'm and he was just, it was very interested in me. And I was like, I rate that. And I was like, I thought in my head, I was like, well, I've got like 
oh, okay, dress on, kind of well dressed tonight. I'm fucking ready. I'm in mm. a good geared up mood. I'm keen to like drop some bombs with fucking the big dog. <laughs> like, yeah, energy was right. So he obviously saw me and he was like, yeah, I want to be around that. Because he was like, kind of, he was like a taxi driver chilling. Yeah. And I was like, you doing this? And he was in a low frequency and he's like, he, he wanted me because we chatted the whole way here. Do you get some? You know? I tell you what, when you look good out here, you get some very curious people. You get a lot of doors opened. Mm -hmm. You get into a lot of good conversations by literally being approached because people can see you operate from a certain standard. But then, like you say, with the taxi drivers, every every single day, if, if I was getting a taxi, like I got a taxi here today, they are curious. When you, if you just look like a slump, no one gives a fuck about you if you're like that. No one gives a fuck. As a 99% of men, no one gives a fuck about. Like once they're 18, no one gives a fuck. Like <laughs> that's like the reality. Girl. And that's why it's tough. Yeah. You have to become somebody that people give a fuck about. And then you win. But then when you win, like people are like, how do I win with women? How do I win at business? If you win at life, you win at all of it. Mm -hmm. If you win at yourself, you win at all of it. Do you give a fuck about yourself? Yeah. So no. instead of, oh, what's the best one-liner for a chick? Why don't you just master you? Yeah. And then everyone will. The lads will give a fuck about you. The women will. The business opportunities will. The potential clients will. Everyone will. Like it all comes together. Like there's nowhere in my life did I think, oh, I need to figure out how to get women. I thought I need to figure out how to make me fucking good. Mm -hmm. And when I'm fucking good, who then wouldn't want to be in some form of partnership? Yeah, it's a, it's a presence. You know, people yeah. just need to be around it when you're, a, when you're about it. You know, are you fucking about it? A lot of people aren't about it no. when it comes to like being across the board. And that kinda... I think it's quite easy to forget that when you're here, you know. The, like I've been out yeah. of the UK now years and it's almost hard to relate. But like I remember my old life. But I, I see occasional stories back in the UK on Instagram. And I'm like, oh my God, like I forget that that's happening every single day. And over here, it's just a complete flow state, full of energy all the time. It's a bubble. I'm like, it's a fucking bubble. Do you know how I see it? Some people may be offended by this, but I mean, I'm from the UK, so I can say it. The UK, in my opinion, is an island and it's got a prison wall around it. <laughs> and people talk about prisons. The UK is the prison. Like, this is how I imagine me going back at Christmas, right? I'm going to go back for probably 24 hours, maybe 48 hours. I feel like I'm getting on a plane and I'm flying into a prison <laughs> and then I've got to escape back out the prison and fly back out. That's how bad the UK is right now. Everyone's just embedded in this mindset. It's rough. Which is so bad. It's yeah, crazy. It is rough. Even the first time I came here, um, me and Amy were eating at uh, Sushi Samba. That restaurant on top of nice, yeah, near Europe, beautiful spot. And she was like, "But we need to go back to UK in X amount of months." And I was like, "I ain't fucking going back. <laughs> this is this is my place now." Me. And she's like, "No, but you're fat." I was, I said, I was like, "Fuck the UK, fuck it." She's like, "You can't say that." You grew up. I was like, "I don't care. I am the happiest I've been in fucking years being here." She's like, "What were those?" I was like, "No, this makes sense to me to be here." Energy, vibe, aura, network, money. How uh, like, easy is life though when you're out of a bad environment? Oh, like bro. it's actually impossible to fail. Yeah. Like, yeah, I understand it. Not everyone's going to go make stupid millions a month, right? But like, it's impossible to not live a great life when you're in a good environment. Yeah. The the only regret I would say I have is I moved to Dubai too late in my perspective. Bro, I, I say the same, mate. I say the same because I, I had more liquid cash probably back when I was fucking see when I was a PT probably see when COVID happened see if I dropped the hammer on that there mm. I'd probably be <laughs> a different different planet but I can't think that way because then fucking ignorance that what is a mm. hindsight it's a beautiful thing you mm. know you look back and be like woulda coulda shoulda but yeah we done it at the time that was uh, right for us I guess bro you yeah. know it's interesting what could have been, mate. What could have been? Where, where could you have been? Do you know what? I, I am grateful for every step I took. I mean, sometimes, you know, people ask, oh, do you wish you got into the fitness sooner? Or do you wish you went online straight away? That's a common question, actually. 
what should I do? Should I go PT first or do I go straight online if I'm coaching fitness? Like obviously we coach some guys who aren't coaching fitness, but if it's fitness, it all depends on who you are and your level of current personal development, right? If, yep. you, if you aren't that personally developed yet, no offense to PTs because I've been one. If you're not that personally developed yet and you need some baseline cash coming in, but you hate your current nine to five, just swap for PT. And then at least you're in a, a better environment. It might not be the world's best environment, but you're in a better environment where you feel fulfilled on your purpose. You can develop in that area. You can work on your online at the same time, but at least all of your work is purpose fuel. Mm -hmm. Then transition up. Now, I also coach a lot of guys who in the CEO program who have skills already. They've already built a great physique. They've already got a good mindset. Or they might be owning a business in a certain area. Now they want to coach other people how to do the same thing, whatever their coaching model is. Well, there's no need for them to go in person. It would be, it would actually be a waste. Mm -hmm. And they're better off just learning the systems to go straight online. So if you're very early doors and you're like, I want to build a good physique because I love fitness and I want to build an online, that's where I would say, look, phase one coaching is best and go into just getting a job in the industry and then the CEO and build the business after, For sure. which was like what I took. Like whilst I was a PT, I had a, I had a coach. What, whilst every minute I've been in this industry, I've always been working up the ladder with something. But at the start, it was heavy on my own personal development more than the business. Yeah. So I was going to come back to that though, isn't it? Because like re reason I jumped on with you, it was like, okay, he's it almost makes complete sense in the direction I want to take things going forward over however many months or years. He's he's already in Dubai. He's already got elements of his life. So we're, we're not the same person. We share similar values. But principles we share. Principles. Cool couple of things. I'm like... That's one big thing we say, actually. We talked about this on our last call. It's not too much... Like, I don't like how-tos and exact scripts and you must do this. You know, we talked about with your social strategy. I'm like but the principles of one of the elements we must do, you're doing, but it's just in a different way to other people. And that's totally cool. And that's actually great. So people need to study. If I talked about how I was doing something, people would be better off. People don't look this deep into stuff, but people would be better off studying. What's the principle behind that, which would be a common factor? Yeah. And it's called common factors analysis. Okay. If people could actually look at what's the root thing that, that's then true in all these different things. That's what's important. So for example, I'm trying to think of a hypothetical. I had someone asking me uh, a question the other day and they were saying, how should I respond to this message? Yep, okay. okay. Now I could have just told them an exact script and I said, well, first, you should at least mirror and acknowledge you've heard what they've said. And then you should transition with your next point. So the mirror and the transition is the principle that they must do. But if I just told them that script next time you got a message, the same guy would have gone, what should I say? You're, you're trading someone to... to I will seek. show both. I will show, look, this is what I would say, but this is the principle. And then you can learn it. Like only when you understand it will you truly learn. Mm -hmm. But just being given the answers doesn't yeah, actually it's... do anything unless they understand it. So one thing I'm very big on, and I think this came from my golf background, is when I got coached, I was so deep and analytical about it. I was like, okay, you tell me to do this, why? What's the principle? Like mm -hmm. what will this do? And once I know that, then I'll do it. Yeah. So I'm very much like that in our physique and mindset. I'm like, this will create this output later because of this. Same with the business coaching. It's mm -hmm. people have to understand why. So for example, you know, when we were talking about um, just helping people in the conversations rather than needing to put everyone on a call. Well, the principle and the why behind that is you can actually impact more people at once because it's more scalable. They're actually communicating with you, not just you passing them off to some person to close yeah. them. And you then have more hours in the day to put into high leverage growth tasks, like actually impacting people, creating more content, getting in front of more people, 
rather than spending time backwards. So the, the, the 12 month, the three year vision is going to have a lot more leverage towards it. But once you understand why people will do it more. Mm -hmm. Cause I always, I always like, uh, looked at that way around before coming with you, you know? So when you kind of position that, that people can do that, you can do that. And it's like, mm. that makes so much more fucking logical sense. Yeah, and, and that's I, the thing. Most people justify their why as they're doing calls. I need to do calls. They do this yeah. content. I need to do this content. But what's fundamentally true is what people don't look at necessarily, mm -hmm. which you obviously realized. Yeah, and I had to have it like almost done to me before I could like process. I was like, oh, that actually felt nicer. Yeah, having that kind of sure. flow with it. I was like, you know what? That's the way. <laughs> From there on forward, and yeah. it's worked well, man. It's worked well going forward, and I'm going to you continue should doing deliver it. a product exactly how you'd receive it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's it. Yeah, what are we saying? We're going to wrap this up, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap more. it, bro. Sick, yeah. you keep talking all night, get a couple more cans in. I know, <laughs> good that, bro. Oh, we got sick. it, that just freestyled.